What's up everybody, Do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be doing another video on Ready or Not because there has been a bunch of updates that have been coming out. So I thought that I would just cover them in this video because I felt that there was enough to actually make a, you know, simple video about it. Actually, this video might be getting a little longer because they just released an update for February and so I'm just going to add it in to the end here. But before we get into that, be sure to like out the video so that more people can see it. Subscribe if you're new and ding that bell so that you can get more content on this game or any other game that I decide to cover. Alright, let's get into it. So I'm not really sure if I talked about this, but they have actually changed the way that NVGs work. Before the NVGs changed, it was like a big circle around the majority of the screen, but the NVGs were pretty much useless because I'd go into like dark areas and the NVGs would be like stupid bright, hard to see anything. It was as if somebody turned on the lights to basically blind me. That was just annoying, but they definitely changed the way that it looks now. Now it kind of looks like you're wearing underwater goggles as NVGs and they actually fix the way that it looks in the dark. The NVGs actually adjust to the darkness and it actually looks kind of cool when it does it. Now a lot of people have said that this is a realistic and I'm just kind of like I don't really care I really don't like the way that MVGs work in real life and when they try to freaking portray them in games like I just hate my fucking screen being blurry most of the time especially at nighttime so I'm completely fine with this I like the way that they have it already but those are just my thoughts what are yours do you like the MVGs the way that they are or are you like me and don't really care let me know down below my personal opinion I think that they actually fixed the MVGs I like them the way that they are now now if only they could fix the flashlights hashtag flashlights matter they are the light in my dark if I can't use a flashlight, then there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Void, you can make a fucking coffee machine, but you can't make a fucking flashlight correctly? Come on! It was a lot better in the previous update. What the hell happened? What do you have against flashlights? Did they shine you the wrong way? Did they burn off your retinas? Let me fucking know! What the fuck? Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Moving on to the next thing. Void Interactive has always said that they wanted to go to console, but it really depended on how the PC version was gonna do. And judging by how it actually launched, getting basically first place during the Christmas season, and news media sites, I say that with my two fingers going up and down, make bogus articles about this game, I imagine it sold pretty well. Is this a good indication that it's gonna go to console? Maybe, there's nothing official, but at the very least, developers ended up releasing some videos of adapting the controls to a PS5 controller. These videos are adaptive trigger tests. The first one is for rifles and SMGs. The next one is for the shotgun. Damn, you really have to press back on that one to freaking shoot it. You can also hear the developer's bird in the background. The next one is for the pistol. I believe that is a 5.7. I can barely see it though. So it seems like they are only doing just the trigger test because it looked like he didn't reload with the uh, circle button there. I haven't played on controller in freaking forever. I forgot what the reload button usually is. Isn't it like X or circle or square or something like that? I can't remember. But yeah, it didn't look like he reloaded with it or moved the camera with the controller. It looked like he did that with the computer. So obviously this is like very bare bones, I can tell. But it's still interesting nonetheless. I don't know if the game's ever going to go to console, but at some point in the future, we're going to be able to adapt a controller to ready or not. But why the hell would I do that? 
that PC Master Race forever, but I guess it is just another step towards the console, although how they're going to actually get the game on the console is going to be interesting to me because I thought Team 17 was supposed to be those guys who gave them a bridge to getting them on the console, but I'm assuming they have a different way because that's what they did with Hell Let Loose, but I'm really glad that they aren't with Team 17 anymore because Team 17 was trying to dabble in uh, NFTs. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here because we never really did find out why Team 17 avoid interactive parted ways. I mean, there's definitely like a number of reasons that people have speculated. Like maybe Void Interactive didn't keep up their end of the bargain, or maybe Team 17 didn't know what type of game they were supporting, although I don't believe that one. Or maybe Team 17 wanted to buy Ready or Not, like how they bought Hell Let Loose, or that Void Interactive figured out that Team 17 was tr gonna try and do NFTs, but I don't think that one is likely because according to a lot of the developers under Team 17, they had no idea that they were doing that, so I doubt it's that, but it's interesting to think about in my opinion. All right, moving on. We are getting some new door opening tools. The name of this tool is called the Halligan tool. They showed off a couple of new animations for first person and third person here, so I'll go ahead and play that there. They say that with this Halligan bar work in progress, you'll be able to do a few things with this, including hopefully turning a door backwards to avoid setting off traps. Maybe turning the door off turns it and breaks a lot of stuff. We'll see. I had noticed that there was actually a tool that was missing here because along with this tool was like another hammer looking tool that was announced along with it. I asked the developer where that was and he said that it was next. Okay, well, hope to see that pretty soon. But the animation was pretty cool. Can't wait to try it out. Moving on to the next thing here, we've got a concept for a brand new map map called Ridgeline, which is a forest map that we have not seen since the first announcement trailer where they showed off this one scene with these guys walking through the forest, if that is the same forest. Maybe it was just a concept at the time, but now it looks like we actually have some interesting stuff with this. Gotta say, it looks pretty good, but this is just concept art. Obviously, we've got like a very lush forest here with some sort of cabin in the middle. Looks like it's inhabited, judging by the smoke that's coming from it. I can only imagine what scenario this is going to be about, but I mean, the house does kind of look abandoned if you kind of zoom in on it like you'll notice that a couple of things are kind of like broken off of the house or not fully attached to it correctly I'll wait to hop into that map and yeah that's pretty much all the new stuff as of this recording now we're gonna hop into the february update but before we do that i just want to read something off really quick according to guinevere she has said that the february update will be smaller but march will definitely be a lot larger so i just wanted to say that before we push into this update all right let's go ahead and talk about it this is the february content announcement to the red or not community as we pass the midpoint of February, we're excited to be able to tease some of the content that we've been working on for the past several weeks, including a major new addition, starting with Melee Suspects. Suspects can now conceal and wield dangerous knives in combat, with more melee weapons to be added later on. With Suspects no longer being limited to the arbitrary possibility of having a gun or not, players will have to be more careful and aware with their approach. Yeah, I mean, Suspects can already run faster than I can, so might as well make it so that they can charge me with freaking knives, right? Also, another thing, I heard that Void was actually thinking about making it so that if somebody like wants to pull something out, there's like a 50-50 chance of it actually being either a gun or a cell phone. So you have to like really watch for that if they ever decide to freaking add that in the game. That's going to be freaking nuts. But anyways, the next thing that they're going to be adding in is enhanced modding support. We've enhanced our modding support to be more user-friendly in-game. Modded maps will now show up on the world map in the lobby, separately from official maps, and modded maps will automatically generate logic without any modder interference necessary. Well, that's cool. It's kind of like how uh, Halo did it with their Forge, you know? Like, you were able to play modded maps in-game seamlessly, especially uh, with Reach, I think it was, and Halo 5. Pretty nice, pretty nice. It also could help with stopping people from stealing mods when they could just, you know, upload it to the game here and have it so that people can just play it without having to go to shady websites, which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video about a website that's stealing mods for profit. If you want to watch that, I'll have it at the icon at the top right, or in the description but uh yeah let's move on to the next thing here we got a new weapon the g36c the iconic german assault rifle has made its way to los Suno sunos i never know how to freaking say that i'm just gonna call it the lspd armory heavily utilized by militaries and security groups worldwide now you'll be able to experience it for yourself it's actually not a new weapon it was a weapon that was in the game previously and for some odd reason they randomly took off the top rail and the gun looks really awkward hope they don't do that again but anyways as i was actually 
talking about how they removed the rail randomly in one update. Somebody was asking in the Discord if they were actually going to keep the rail this time around, and they said that they were going to have a lot of good stuff that they plan to add options wise. That includes messing with your stock. If anybody wasn't happy with the scar, the way that the back end looks, and I guess the top of the G36C if you don't want the rail on, which who the hell doesn't want it? Cool. Pretty dope. If you ask me. Another new weapon that's going to get added to the game is the BRN 180. This is another weapon that was added to the game and was randomly removed afterwards. Interesting. I wonder if it's going to be different. This modernization of the venerable AR-18 has become increasingly popular in the civilian and now police market. Its time-tested design is not only functional, but has a really cool charging handle. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, again, this was another weapon that was in the game previously, but now it seems to be coming back with a different caliber. According to the devs, it's a .300 blackout. Initially, it was supposed to be for the SBR-300, but I guess they didn't want it that way? I'm not really sure what happened there, but the SBR-300 will no longer have the 300 blackout because it's going to the BRN-180. They say that the caliber size really doesn't matter. So yeah, the next thing that they're going to be adding is bug fixes and AI tweaks. As with every major patch, we will be issuing fixes for existing bugs and work on improving existing AI to maintain its difficulty while still feeling fair. I don't really have too much to say about that. Hopefully uh, the AI definitely gets better. I mean, the AI is not like the worst AI I've ever seen, but they can definitely be a little annoying and sometimes frustrating. But uh, yeah, let's move on. We expect to push this content onto our experimental build for supporters to test on Monday, February 21st with full release to all players for the end of the month. Okay, cool. While the shortened month and the complexity of programming and adding melee suspects means February's update is smaller than initially planned, it has helped us lay the groundwork early for next month's update. We expect to see a much larger content push in March and look forward to sharing it with you in the near future. We continue to be extremely humbled by the support Ready or Not has received. With over a million new players in more than 170 countries since launch, we are grateful and ecstatic to keep working towards the future of the game and hope to make Ready or Not the quintessential tactical shooter of its era. I mean, I feel like Ready or Not at the moment is just like the pinnacle of the genre because there's just not a game that's like it or a game that really comes close to Ready or not aside from SWAT 4, a game released back in 2005, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think down below, because I'm going to end it here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon or hop on that join button. Any donation helps. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on this game or any other game that I decide to cover. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.